My wife was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease approximately four years ago. Like many of you, we watched a Today Show piece regarding the research at Stanford University on the vibrating glove called vibrotactile therapy with great interest. Based upon this piece, I went to the Stanford University website and downloaded the research papers that had been generated regarding the creation of this capability. From the <clears throat> paper, I reached out to the manufacturer of the components that were used in the study and found it was about $8,500 to put together the components uh, of a vibrating glove that they had used. That seemed like a good bit of money for something that was highly experimental and I wasn't sure of the results. So I embarked to try to build one of these myself. <clears throat> this is my very first attempt. The white pieces that you see are called a breadboard. It is a uh, means of putting together a circuit with components. This is the processor. It's called an Arduino. It is a very small computer that is purpose built specifically for controlling things like motors, lights, etc. We found great efficacy on this. Uh, my PD partner had some relief of both motor and non-motor symptoms. Based upon the success of this, I then built these two components to replace the breadboards on the previous. Uh, this required a good bit of soldering and there are uh, solder breadboards with the Arduino contained within. The next iteration was this that we uh, fondly call the buzz board because it buzzes when it runs. These black boxes contain the solder breadboard. I added these terminal blocks so that I could change out the fingers easily. And I did design this with one per hand uh, because I was working on building a set of gloves. A note, the uh, fingers are actually what's called a piezo motor. <clears throat> it is the same vibrating motor that makes your cell phone, your pager, etc. vibrate. One note on this, this is built on a lap desk that I got from Amazon. Uh, the one side effect that she did report was having used this for a period of time, she found that her fingers got cold. Uh, we put in the uh, wrist rest for comfort and just a set of cotton gloves with the tips of the fingers cut off in order to keep her hands warm through the process. And then finally, this is the set of gloves. There is a right in the, well, two gloves. You can put them either side. Um, I further miniaturized the Arduino component is in this box, wristband, and the fingers enclosed in these finger cots are the same as the fingers here, so they have the same motors. The original ones I built, and we'll see how this is done, uh, I used some inexpensive motors from Amazon, about 50 cents a piece. Um, they have a slightly lower frequency than the ones used by Stanford. I then upgraded to ones that are at the frequency of Stanford or industrial, uh, but they went from about 50 cents a piece to $4 a piece. Um, we have not seen a change in the efficacy based upon those, uh, but your mileage may vary. So that's the history. This, by the way, is just a cell phone battery pack from Walmart that we use to power these. So that is the history of the road that I've walked. Uh, a couple of notes. Um, this is a, an experiment that I've embarked on. Uh, your mileage may vary, no warranty, express or implied. I am not a healthcare professional. I am not doing this as a commercial enterprise. Uh, for me, this is truly a what would Jesus do enterprise. If one person finds comfort and symptom relief uh, from the road that I've walked uh, with my PD partner, that will be enough. So without further ado, let's get to building. Called an Arduino Uno. We will need a computer in order to program this, you only have to program it one time. It will remember it's programming from that point forward. Uh, a note, the, the components that go into this are under $100. Now that does not include the cost of a soldering iron and a heat gun, etc. cetera. Um, so if you don't have those tools, it, it may be a bit more. The Arduino is designed to take what are called shields. 
This is a motor shield. The motor shield does what it sounds like. It drives motors. And so we are gonna take these two and we're going to put one on top of the other. That's why it's called a shield. It's on top of his protector. And we are just going to line them up. Be careful not to bend the pins. If you do bend the pins, you can bend them back. And it just clips together. So now you have an Arduino Uno with a motor shield. It's a bit hard to see, but there is motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four on the device. And those will correspond to fingers, one, two, three, and four, which will be one, two, three, and four. Uh, the reason this matters is the Stanford study is specific in the pattern that is required or that they used in their study. Um, I adhere to that. I defer to them. I say this is uh, not my invention. It's just an instantiation of their invention. Um, just a, a note as we're getting going here, the, um, as we started traveling down this road, we purchased a, uh, a vibrating glove on the market. Uh, it was provided vibrating vibration on the backs of the fingers at a steady rate. It had no impact whatsoever. Uh, we then purchased a vibrating ball that I asked her to hold with her fingertips. Um, she held it with her fingertips. It had a steady uh, pattern to it. Also seemed to have no impact. Uh, following the Stanford design of a very specific pattern of vibration, um, we had uh, both motor and non-motor symptom improvement. These motors are from Amazon. They're quite inexpensive. Um, these rotate at 12,000 rotations per minute. That is a bit below the Stanford specification of, uh, they specify 250 hertz, which equates to 15,000 rotations per minute. Um, in the, the notes, I'll give a link to these, as well as the more expensive ones uh, that do rotate at the 15,000. Uh, in our case, we have not seen a change in efficacy with either motor. Uh, we did early on have to replace some of these. Uh, whether that has to do with the durability or the fact that my initial design sent too much voltage to them, I believe it's the overvolting them, but say your, your mileage may vary. But these are 50 cents a piece, the others are $4, so make your uh, decisions upon how you see that going forward. I'm now going to pause and assemble the case from these pieces. I strongly encourage you to put your Arduino in a case, uh, whichever one you pick. is uh, there, there are lots of these on the market. Um, some have the shield. The shield can fit inside. Some the shield goes on top, which is what this one is. Uh, really your choice. Okay, so I peeled off the brown protective paper, assembled the case for the instructions, and now I have an Arduino Uno, technically an Uno R3, in a uh, nice clear case. Um, this is a nice case. I'll put the part in uh, the, the attachment, but any case will do. Technically, you don't need a case uh, for this project. I strongly advise it. If uh, your PD partner has the kind of success and the efficacy that mine has. Uh, she targets using this uh, for an hour twice per day. The Stanford study was two hours twice per day, so a total of four hours. We take our motor shield, line the pins up just as we saw before. You'll notice there's an opening in the top of the case that we can get this through and just gently squeeze it together and we're assembled. Now, uh, two notes. One, the, uh, the nuts on this thing are, are quite small. Um, the good Lord didn't build my hands for microelectronics, so I use tweezers to put the nuts on. Um, there is a jumper right here. There's maybe yellow, maybe black or blue, a different color. This jumper allows this motor shield to pull power 
from the Arduino directly. Um, now, the issue with that is that we don't get enough power through the Arduino's power supply to drive the motors at the level we need to. So we are gonna take this off. And you will not need that jumper again. So that means that we have to power this device. And the way we are gonna do that, and let me point out right here, it says ground. So this is where we're gonna attach power. Black goes to ground, red goes to M plus. This is a USB cable, just a regular USB, that has just exposed wires on the end. And so we're going to put that in here. In black to ground. So now we have our power connected. Red to the M plus, black to ground, and just this little cable that gives us USB on the end. And that is how we're going to power the motors. And then we will connect the Arduino cable. This is the same one that we program it with. It's a classic USB A to B. The old style used to be on printers. This goes to the computer. This goes in for programming and then we will use this to power the Arduino itself. So we now have a controller assembled. Let's get on to uh, building the fingers. Okay, so we are going to need wires to go from the controller uh, to the, the motor for the fingers. I make these about 10 inches, somewhere around 25 centimeters. And we are gonna need four because each finger is gonna be driven individually on a hand. We will need a total of eight in order to build the entire board. break to upgrade my wire cutters. Seven. And eight. Since we're driving both hands off a single controller, And we use four fingers on each hand, a set of eight. Okay, next step is we are going to make the actual uh, motor connections that vibrate the fingertips. Um, I'm still working on a way to do this without having to uh, solder, but haven't come up with one. If anybody's got an idea, I'm happy for the improvement. So I'm going to strip the end of the wire like that. That's the black. and the red. You don't need much. And the reason you don't need much is because the motors are quite small. Okay? So I am going to move the uh, camera around so we can run this through a magnifier so you can actually see something. Okay, so you're looking through a magnifier at the end of the, uh, the wire. And this is the motor. That white is paper that you peel off with an adhesive. This black circle here is the top. That's what will actually be up against the fingertip. Okay, so soldering. This is quite simple. Do not let this put you off. All I'm gonna do is hold the soldering iron against the bottom of the wire, and I'm gonna hold the solder up against the top. until I see the solder melt 
onto the wire, okay? Now, this motor is red and blue, so blue to black, red to red. I'm gonna touch the solder again. I'm gonna hold the, the wire up against it, the motor. I'm gonna take the soldering iron away and hold there until it's connected, okay? I'm gonna take the black out. I am gonna take that red wire that I stripped previously and I'm gonna put it in place. I'm gonna hold my soldering iron up underneath it, warm the wire up, hold the solder up against the top until it, we see it. Soldering iron away, water stay, wire stays in place, and voila. Next step, I use heat shrink, and as you'll see, we have two connections there that are right next to each other. So there's a high probability that those are going to short out and the motor's not going to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of 1 8 inch heat shrink, I cut it in half, you don't have to. I do that so I don't have as much stiffness down toward the fingers. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in what you do. Slide it gently over that connection. And now we have a protection between the two. Next step is I take a piece of quarter inch heat shrink and I cut it. And now I'm gonna put both wires through it. And I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the base of the motor. And this keeps the wires together. It makes it easier to manage, but also keep in mind that these motors were designed to be attached to a circuit board or, or maintained. And, and they're gonna be relatively loose when we just mount them on the board or on a glove. So this provides some mechanical stability here. And the next step is to use a heat gun and heat shrink these down. So now I have the motor, I have it connected, red and black. This is just a standard hardware store heat gun. Watch what you're shooting past. I'm gonna heat shrink everything in my heat shrink case before I use it. And it will just shrink right down tight on the wall. See, it does not take long, it doesn't take a bit of heat. And you will see the heat shrink conforms nicely. And we have a nice finger, as I call them. Seven more. So now we have <clears throat> eight, I call these fingers, made. So this is an assembly with our piezo motor then the two heat shrink on it, red and black, positive and negative. Now the next step is not strictly required for the board, but I have added it as I'm working through some of the mechanics issues uh, for gloves. So I take, this is a, a 3 8 inch heat shrink, and I put it over enough that the motor is slightly into it What this allows me to do is to strengthen that connection of the motor into the heat shrink, or into the, the wire itself. So now I've got a completed and protected finger. Just as a reminder, we started with these little motors. These are the inexpensive ones from Amazon. The more expensive ones are slightly uh, larger, but you see how small the wire connection is. And so that's what we're reinforcing with that. So I will heat shrink the other seven.
it is time to program our Arduino. So we're going to take our Arduino and the cable and we're going to plug the cable in. Just slides in like you were plugging it in a printer. And now we are going to go over to a computer and download the files that we need. We are not going to plug in the USB until we have the software installed on the computer. So let's go. Okay, I've downloaded the files from the site. I brought the uh, Arduino IDE for Windows, as well as the other two. We'll deal with those in a minute. I'm going to install the Arduino IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Don't let that put you off. It sounds like a whole lot more than it is. We're not going to use a lot of it. So I'm going to take this Adafruit Motor Shield library that was in the zip. I am going to put it in Arduino. I'm going to put it in that libraries directory that I created, and I'm going to paste it there. Okay, so now it's in the libraries, and then I am going to do a file, open. I'm going to go to downloads. I put this in a vibrotactile, and I'm going to open the motor shield. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to open. This is the actual sketch that is going to run the Arduino. I am now going to plug the Arduino into the USB on the computer. Notice under select board, now it knows there's an Arduino Uno. So now I am going to upload the sketch. You'll notice first it compiles it. And then it's going to upload it into the Arduino. And so the sketch is loaded and is running. Now from this point forward, whenever power is applied to that Arduino, it's going to start running this sketch. So now we have a programmed Arduino. <clears throat> we have a power light on top on the motor shield. So I've connected it to uh, this little battery pack. It's a little hard to see, but inside you will see a green light that's on constantly, and then you'll see another that flashes periodically. And I, right there it is. I've added to the program that flash. Uh, it comes on actually during a pause in, in the vibration therapy that's built in. Um, but when you see that flashing with that periodic, you know that this thing is programmed properly. So as soon as power is applied, Arduino starts running its sketch and it will run in a circle until you take power away. So this is the uh, standard lap board that I got off of Amazon. This is a wrist rest to make it a bit more comfortable. Uh, it's time to start putting this thing together. So your PD partner is gonna spend, if you do what mine does, up to two hours a day on this. Um, she does an hour, first half of the day, hour, second half of the day. So being comfortable is important. So I have been brought in my PD partner. Say hi, partner. Hi, partner. And you put your hands in a place that's going to be comfortable to rest them on the board. Thank you. Now, we're only doing the, the fingers, not the thumb. And I'm just going to put a dot and a dot and a dot and a dot. That's I've enhanced the dots a bit so you can see them easier. Now I'm going to use these command, just decorating tabs, and I am going to put one of these right above and just beside each of the dots. And then I'm going to use a cable tie to connect the fingers to these so they stay in place. So I've placed the eight command strips at each of the finger positions, and <clears throat> now we're going to take and put together our final unit here. 
And as you recall, we have four different motors that are controlled by the motor shield, okay? M1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going to do red and black, red and black, red and black. One is going to drive finger one, and finger one is going to be finger one here and finger one here. Two will be two and two. Three will be three and three. And four will be four and four. And the program is such that it follows the Stanford pattern, so you want to have these mapped. So we will take two of the fingers and connect them into one. Two of the fingers to two, two to three, three and two to four. So, next step, need my wire strippers. And we'll just strip red and black on one. We will strip red and black on another. Match those lengths up. So I keep red to red and black to black. I twist them together before I insert just because it makes it easier to get it in. And now I'm gonna back off the screw for motor one. two red together for one, our two black together for one, and then we have our first two fingers, one on left and one on right connected. Now I'll do the other three. So <clears throat> I've connected to all of my terminal blocks. So I have two motors to one, two motors to two, two to three, and, three to, and two to four. Now I'm gonna distribute those across. So I'm gonna take both of my connections to one, and I'm gonna put one on left hand, one on right hand, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same for two, three, and four. I'm also going to use cable ties to hold them in place. And while I'm at it, once I get the wires run, I'm gonna put a little command here in the center. Now, before I do that, I like to anchor my Arduino. And I do that with self-adhesive two-sided Velcro. So it's a peel and stick. I'm just gonna stick it to the bottom. peel. I like to put, position the Arduino someplace central because again you're distributing all of your uh, your fingers to both sides. So that's connected and now I'm just going to put each of my fingers, I'm actually going to go just below the dots that my partner gave me. So I've attached my Arduino I've run my wires, so one and one, two and two, three and three, four and four. Following the Stanford model, based upon uh, the publication, it's quite important that stays. So I often tell my PD partner, she's not a science experiment. We're trying to accomplish something here, so it's very 
very important. We let the scientists do the science and I'll just do the mechanics. I am gonna trim these cable ties just to tidy things up and we will power it up and see what we've got. So I have connected my power points. If you recall, we have a separate power that powers the motor shield from the one that powers the Arduino. Now this is a personal preference, but I have put in a Y cable that allows those two powers to come to a single plug, and I put a switch in, and the switch allows me to have a single place that I am able to turn the board on and off. So moving wires to the side, once we apply power, and if you listen carefully, you will see why we call it a buzz board. Use of this is you place fingers one, two, three, and four. My hands aren't the size of my partner's. And just rest fingertips on there. And that is the, the basis of my interpretation of the vibrotactile technology. Uh, the pattern and frequency being used, um, well, period being used is uh, matches up with the paper. Uh, I did use the less expensive motors in this particular build. Uh, so these are 12,000 RPM motors, uh, whereas to match perfectly with the Stanford paper, you would go with the 15,000 RPM. Uh, look at the inventory sheet below and you will see. A couple of final thoughts. Um, first is do not skimp on power pack. Um, you can run the motors through the power. Remember, we took that jumper off initially for power, and you can have it all run through the Arduino. The motors will vibrate. They don't vibrate very strongly. Uh, do not scrimp on the power pack. Um, you can run this on a power pack with some AAA batteries. It will run. However, and this is probably the, the hardest thing I've gone through in, in this journey, uh, the first one of these that I built, um, which is a, a several iterations before this design, I overvolted the motors, and after about two weeks of operation, they didn't quit, but they started to fail. And what they did is they were not vibrating as strongly. Uh, which, which my PD partner told me, and I checked some voltages and everything looked fine. Within a couple of days, I started seeing the, the benefit that we found from this to fade away. So don't scrimp on your power. I have had these motors fail, not a lot. Usually uh, when they fail, it's because I, I tear them up trying to make a glove, which we'll talk to in a minute. Um, but if your partner says one of these isn't working or it doesn't feel like it's vibrating as strongly as it was, uh, pay attention. Watching them, them backslide, if you get the benefit that we did, uh, is, is a really hard thing. Um, so that is putting together a buzz board. Uh, if there is interest, I can put together a video of how to make this same device into a glove. Uh, I can also walk through what I'm working on, uh, which is a, a much smaller and, and less expensive version of this. Uh, and so I have put together a, a pair of gloves where uh, the control pack is about this, this size, just to this area, uh, and rides on the wrist. So they're two independent gloves. They're not connected, uh, a right and a left. and. I'm happy to, to put up the, the video for those if there's interest. Um, as I mentioned, and I'll, I'll re reiterate, no warranty express or implied, your mileage may vary. Uh, we have had really great success with this, seen a tremendous impact. I hope someone out there has as benefit as well. Uh, if you find this build to be challenging, and I've specifically put this together to minimize soldering and be as simple as possible, any high school or uh, community college that has a robotics program can easily assemble this. Um, so good luck. Uh, I put the parts list on the, the Google Drive listed below. I put the software listed below. Uh, my email address is there. Feel free to email me. I will respond as I can. 
Uh, as I said, this is not a commercial venture. I have a day job, um, but we've had a really great impact and efficacy of this uh, with my PD partner and wish you luck with yours as well. Thanks and have a blessed day.